Testing, testing. Yeah, good morning everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's me, my ear. It's been a long time since I last uh, spoke. And um, it's just, uh, you know, I've been busy with a lot of things lately in college and just, you know, more and been, you know, half, half the week I'm at the microbiology lab, I'm doing my research and doing the studies and finishing up my college, finishing up my science classes. Um, and on my way to hopefully apply to optometry school and um, become an eye doctor in the future, that's very much, I'm, I'm, I feel hopeful, you know, it's going to be a, a arduous journey from now until then, but I feel hopeful. Um, I just want to comment about um, recent political changes. I mean, I, me, I'll, be, I'll tell you the truth, like, not just me, but many in the Bangladeshi community in, in, in America, uh, many among the Muslim communities at large throughout this country, throughout, um, especially in major cities, um, have, you know, voted for Trump, given our future 47 president, uh, Donald J. Trump, uh, given him a sort of a chance, you know, despite the fact that we know, you know, we know where, where, where Trump is coming from, uh, from his first term before COVID. We know that it wasn't, it, clearly it wasn't, we weren't living in a perfect world before COVID and there were problems back then. So, I mean, but nonetheless, I mean, now it's gotten to a point where we had the whole four years of Biden-Harris, inflation, economies breaking up, it's hard to get a job, part-time is, is so rare to get, even for me to, to get part-time job, it was so hard to get, hard to find it and hard to apply for it. Um, you know, things have been going not in the right direction for working people in this country. Um, so, you know, hence, you know, people want change. We want change. And so Trump got elected and, you know, he was able to win. And um, no, it was not a landslide, but, you know, he was able to win for this election. Um, and as of yet, well, what we've been seeing when it comes to the U.S. Uh, and the future administration and, and who's going to be in our government who's going to be in our federal government this upcoming, you know, when Trump becomes the 47th president by next 2025, January 2025. What we're seeing is this kind of resurgence or coming back of the neocon and, and maybe not the, uh, the obvious warmongers like um, uh, Mike Pompeo and Nikki Haley who were, who were exposed because they were, they were so, it was so obvious and they were exposed uh, in debates and in many, you know, independent uh, commentators who, who who use their show and platforms to expose their their complicity in in America's being closer to war with other country with Russia and China, and especially with Iran. That's how you know it was obvious that though they were the war warmongers. But the problem is, it's it, this is the issue with every government and every administration is just. And this is probably why, and this is my guess and why Vivek Ramaswamy was not chosen as the Secretary of State, and instead it was uh, uh, Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio, of all people. I mean, Donald, Donald Trump chose him as, to be the possible uh, Secretary of State. And then already you're having, you know, like uh, Elise Stefanik, who's another, who's from my state in New York, um, from more upstate, and she's like a congresswoman there. Uh, so far, it's it's hinting back into the same mistakes that Trump made, um, and Trump's rhetoric and the way he campaigned the first time in 2015 was very anti-war, very like against the lobby and, and stuff like that. But you know, totally changed and totally you know flipped when he when he became president. So there might just be the same the same thing might just happen again. Unfortunately, it's a pendulum, you know. In American politics, it's a whole pendulum, so it swings right, swings left, uh, it goes back and forth. Um, and unfortunately, like we, the working people and taxpayers in this country and those who are young and about to get to the workforce, um, we're going to have to face the consequence. We're going to have to face the brunt. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, uh, one, one clear point of view and perspective, which um, I found is probably the, the most obvious one is probably we shouldn't even vote. I mean, the idea of even voting in this system, of even participating in this system, it's a whole scam. They're not meant to work for us. Majority of voters don't, like majority of the Americans don't vote. 
Um, even in this election, it was clearly 75 million going to Trump, 71 million going to Harris. That's, all, that's not even the majority of the country. And even if you include third party voters, that's not the majority of the country. Majority of the people don't vote. Um, people close to me didn't vote. A lot of people, and this is, and no one wants to talk about that. Yeah, but that should be discussed more and people should look into uh, the perspective and why people, people don't vote, why they choose not to vote. Uh, because this is the system we live in. It's, it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna be with a change. We can only change ourselves. That's the reality.